In this chapter, our attention is going to be on cells. Cells are the smallest units of life. They're the smallest living things that there are. And all cells come from earlier cells. So there's the cell lineage that um, continues on through time. And that's actually called the cell theory or the cell doctrine. Uh, the fact that cells come from pre-existing cells. They don't just kind of appear from nowhere. So um, as the smallest living things, cells are going to be like the building blocks for us when we are considering different organ systems, different, um, different functional units in the human body. Cells are really important for that. And cells are the things that actually use the biological molecules, the organic molecules that we learned about in the last chapter. So what we'll do in this chapter, chapter three, is we'll kind of focus in on three different areas. We'll start off by talking about the classification of cells, and then we'll get into special structures that different types of cells have inside of them. And then finally, we're gonna talk about resources that cells use and how they use them, and where do they get the energy in order to do what they do. So let's go ahead and get started with the classification of cells. Cells are classified according to how they're organized inside. Um, what do all cells have in common, regardless of their internal organization? Something that they all have in common is that they have a plasma membrane that surrounds them. That kind of provides a boundary, a separation between the cell and the external environment. So in the picture here, what we have are two very different types of cells, but each one has a plasma membrane around the outside, and that kind of keeps the contents separated from the external surroundings. Looking beyond that, there are two major groupings of cell types, and we've mentioned this in passing in chapter one. Uh, let's bring it up again here. So the two different major groupings of cells are the eukaryotes and the prokaryotes. And the big difference between those two groupings is whether or not there's something called a nucleus. Um, eukaryotes, eukaryotic cells, have a nucleus. This is a structure that houses the DNA. The nucleus is um, bound by a membrane inside of the cell. So if I just point to the picture here on the left, this purple area would be the nucleus. We'll come back to this in more detail shortly. Um, and then outside of the nucleus, all this other stuff would be called cytoplasm. The cytoplasm has kind of like a, a gel material. It's called cytosol. And it also has a bunch of things floating in that cytosol. Those floating things are called organelles. These are tiny functional units inside of the cell. And we'll be looking at a lot of organelles in this chapter to see what they do, what their function is. The other major cell type is a prokaryotic cell. Prokaryotes do not have a nucleus. So if you look at this cell over here, there's no particular structure where the DNA is housed. The DNA is present, but it's just kind of floating freely um, inside of the cell. However, something that prokaryotes have and eukaryotes do not have generally is a cell wall. There are some exceptions. Plants are eukaryotes and they have a cell wall. But um, in general, prokaryotes are the ones that have a cell wall. They also have a plasma membrane. So they'll have a plasma membrane around the outside and just inside of that, there'll be more of a rigid cell wall and that helps to protect these cells. These cells are generally smaller than eukaryotic cells. Um, these would include things like bacteria, um, so anyway, those are the two major groupings of cells based on the internal organization. So let's go ahead and take a look at, um, at that internal organization. How does the structure inside of a cell affect its function, what the cell is able to do? So in general, all cells have some things that they need to be able to accomplish. And those things include being able to gather materials from the environment around them, being able to get rid of waste products that are generated um, inside of the cell. And all cells need to be able to make those macromolecules that we learned about in chapter two, things like carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, and nucleic acids. They need to be able to make those. And they all, as living things, they all need to be able to grow and reproduce. So um, th there are some structures that are in place sort of in all cells in order to allow these things to happen. 
But then on top of this, there are also specialized structures that certain cells have. And most cells, it turns out, are specialized. So just to give a few examples of this, this is looking within the human body, a few different cell types in the human body. On the left here we have muscle cells. These are specialized to be able to contract. So they have special structures that do just that very thing. Special structures that kind of squeeze, kind of like a spring, um, and that causes the whole cell to shorten. In the middle, we have some nerve cells. Nerve cells have these long projections. These are specialized for sending signals, so sending information. And then over here, these are cells that are lining um, the, the inside of the kidneys. And these are very important for, for the kidneys to be able to process uh, water and, and make urine, so get rid of waste, flush waste from the body. Um, and the sorts of connections that exist between these cells are really special. We don't see those sorts of connections in other cell types necessarily. So we'll be looking at, um, as we go through different organs and organ systems in the human body, we'll bring up some of these specialized structures that exist. Um, it's just important to keep in mind, okay, these are, these are cells. They kind of fulfill the basic criteria of cells and they also have these special things going on on top of that. Most cells are very small. Most cells you can't see with an unaided eye. Uh, most of the time we would need a microscope to be able to see cells. And if we were meeting together, what we would see um, is generally with a light microscope. We can magnify things up to a thousand times. So right here, this is a picture obtained with a light microscope. This is a typical kind of an image that we would be able to obtain in a biology lab using a light microscope. And um, what this would allow us to see are different cell types. So these tiny little dark spots, these are actually bacteria. These are prokaryotic cells, they're E. coli. And then it looks like there are some other cells kind of floating in the background as well. With an electron microscope, which is a more specialized tool, electron microscopes allow us to magnify up to a thousand, a hundred thousand times. So much more magnification. We can see a lot more detail. These over here, these are images obtained with different types of electron microscopes. And these are also E. coli cells. So we're looking at the same type of cell as these little purple dots over here, um, but they are much more magnified in these cases. So different types of microscopes allow us to see at different levels of magnification. Um, these are really expensive and big. Light microscopes are not so expensive and not so big. So generally these are what are more commonly used to do studies with. 